Hi, and welcome back to a very festive edition of the Women of Wrestling podcast. I'm the fat man with a beard. No, not Santa Claus. I am Stu Allen. I'm here alongside Lee Burton, my chief elf. Thanks, I think. <laughs> it's the, uh, it's, it's Christmas! Yay! And this is the time of year then where we, uh, we get to look back over the, uh, the last 12 months and, and take stock of what we've seen over the last year and, and all, all the people we've talked to over the last year. Uh, we've had, you know, a fantastic sort of array of guests over the last year on the show. Yeah, it's been really, really varied. We've had Jetta talking about her retirement. We've had Annie Social talking about a Dunkin' Donuts that you have to walk around the drive-thru. We've had Amazing Kong talking about her experiences wrestling in Japan. Yeah, we've had uh, Serena Deeb talking about the return to Shimmer and her time in WWE. We've had the uh, Shimmer champion Madison Eagles. Uh, we've had uh, Lufisto talking about just her story this year, what, what year she's had as yeah. well. We've had Dave Prezak talking about the, the birth of Shimmer and, uh, and Volcano Girls and there's just the, the sheer amount of work that goes into each one of those shows. All these shows are still available for download, by the way. They're available uh, through iTunes and they're also available on the uh, DVD website under the heading of the Women of Wrestling podcast. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we've got a presentation that we want to make uh, tonight as well for the uh, Wrestler of the Year, according to according to the podcast so we've got that coming up as well but you know since we last uh since we last convened for a podcast um there's been too much happened but there's been a, f- a couple of big stories um i suppose uh i suppose we could start with wwe and uh we'll mention that the biggest story in the last couple of months has been the the finish of season three of nxt um that's assuming anybody still watches it uh, given that it went onto the internet um after a few weeks I think you're probably more likely to watch it if you were maybe overseas from America because yeah. you know, we still got it on TV over here in Britain. And I think so did Canada. I think so did most of the international uh, areas. Um, but yeah, it was it, it was it was a pretty controversial show. It, it split a lot of opinions, caused uh, quite a lot of arguments. Um, <laughs> I, I was a I was a Caitlin fan. Um, I was pleased that she won, and I know that caused a, a, a bit of. Uh, bit of controversy but you know the way i look at it is this wwe is is we're, we're not trying to we're not trying to choose somebody here to be on the next shimmer show we're trying to choose someone to be in the next wwe uh tv show um we're looking to find somebody who's going to fit into what's an entertainment product and what is increasingly a a, a far more um personality based product than it is wrestling based and uh, to me the entertainment company got the best entertainer out of the group which is weird when you consider that she was a last-minute replacement. Yeah, th- that's the other thing as well. I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people have a problem with the fact that you know she literally was drawn into the uh, the competition on the last weekend. She signed with uh, developmental about what three weeks beforehand or something. Mm. Had her um, first match on NXT. Yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of people sort of resent that, but the fact that she got the easy way through, and you know, I suppose to a certain way she did get the easy way through to the uh, to the main roster when you consider how hard a lot of other women work to get to that position. But you know, I I like the fact that she didn't have um, any preconceived notions of what she was doing out there. I like the fact that she was more natural than you would usually get. And she did just go out there and essentially didn't treat it very seriously, which is, I think, another what people see as another criticism. But I think it was a massive boost for her because, you know, that you get that analogy where if you hold something too tight, you might break it. Mm. She wasn't holding it tight at all. She was juggling it in the air and playing keepy uppy with it. Yeah, I mean, if if Caitlin hadn't won NXT and if Caitlin had been released from her developmental contract. I don't think she would have cared. She would have gone on. She had done something else in her life. Well, she was um, going to become a bodybuilder. She was. She was. Uh, and a proper competitive bodybuilder as well. So, you know, there, there are other options out there in the world for Caitlin. But, uh, you know, she's fallen into wrestling for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, I wish her all the best in it. She's, uh, she's still obviously a horrible wrestler, but, you know, something that will come over time. Yeah, and it's not like the, the other ones, the other uh, women who did well in that series aren't going to get recognized anyway aj's going to make it to the main roster naomi's definitely going to make it to the main roster yeah absolutely i mean naomi was the person that a lot of people oh you got to support the wrestler you got to support the wrestler um and yeah i mean I, i do take that point but but naomi to me i i had a problem i had a problem finding her in any way particularly likable that's the thing isn't it you can't teach charisma yeah you 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 really can't and naomi i think finds it difficult to uh 
to express herself or to be uh, to, to be a personality. Um, you know, her and her and Caitlin really were diametric opposites as far as uh, as far as their skill sets were concerned. But yeah, Naomi deserves to be on the roster. I'm sure she'll have a pretty good run, and I think she's already. I mean, there's no thinking about it. She is already better uh, wrestler than uh, than quite a lot of people on the roster already. Yeah, she'll definitely be showing up quite a few people when she makes it to the main roster. And AJ as well. Um, I, th- I think both of those have got um, good good futures. And, you know, for all we know, they might end up outlasting Caitlyn anyway. But as far as the TV show, um, I was I was pleased with the outcome. Yeah, it, it was fine. It was a, it was a fine t- it was a fine TV show. It's probably weirdly might maybe the best season of NXT, partly because each girl was able to establish themselves as a character and a personality. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and let's be honest with you. I mean, for 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 all the uh, for all the the arguments that it caused, it's a pretty inconsequential show, all things yeah. considered. Yeah. Um, as far as TNA is concerned, uh, I suppose their big their their big thing over the last couple of months has been the ongoing feud between uh, Tara and Mickey James. Yeah. Now this is a lot of people have been giving this a lot of praise, and I can see why you give it a lot of praise. But I had a little bit of a problem with some of the backstage brawls in the fact that they just went on so long. Yes. A backstage brawl should be broken up within seconds. Therefore, people want to see them fight in the ring. <laughs> Whereas you give them away too much in a hardcore brawl situation when they actually go to wrestle in the ring, it's going to seem a bit him by comparison yeah i wasn't keen on their on their false count anywhere match at final resolution just because it started off well and then just sort of degenerated into silliness by the end of it with you know fighting in the men's room and guys trying to you know zip themselves up and get out of the way and madison rain being in one of the stores with a fire extinguisher it just all seemed too incongruous for my liking what was she doing in there and how did she know that they were going to be there did she wait in the men's toilets the entire show on the complete off chance that that's well, what she did a promo. Is? So she must have done a promo and then gone and picked up a fire extinguisher and headed off to the gents. <laughs> we shouldn't have to think about these things, but yeah. unfortunately, uh, when you've got little uh, logic holes like that, it's difficult not to notice them. Yeah. Then the next day, um, for the for the for the impact tapings, because they did a big bulk of them straight after final resolution, um, they had they had uh, Mickey versus Tara cap off their feud in a cage in the main event of Impact. Good and bad points to this. Yes, good point is the fact that the knockouts got to main event the show and were given a proper gimmick match and given time to make it work. Bad points to this. Unfortunately, they did the match with one hour's build. That match could have gone the week after, and they could have pimped it up the whole time. It could have gone on pay-per-view the next month, and they could have got another buy rate out of it, because a women's cage match is rare. Yeah. And the other bad point about it is that they pretty much killed themselves, and it got the lowest rating on the show. I think that's something to do with the fact that it ran over into reaction as well. It's still it? sad, though. It it's is still sad. It, it is still sad, yeah. Um, and I absolutely agree with you. I mean, given the fact that the knockouts are invariably the top-rated segment on most uh, weeks of Impact... Um, you know, how cool would it have been to run promos on Spike TV through the week saying that, you know, we're going to see two girls in a cage fighting on Thursday night? You know, tell mm. me people aren't going to tune in and watch that, even even just a curiosity factor? God, yeah, I'd watch that. Exactly. I mean, I, yeah, but we're, we're fans. We know what they're talking about. I'm talking about people who don't even know. I'm mm. going to go, hmm, all right, let me just tune in Spike and see what this is all about. And then they see these two girls, and they were beating bells out of each other. It wasn't the, you know, there were the, the, odd, there were the odd sloppy move and bits that looked like it, that, that someone could have seriously got hurt. But at the same time, for the most part, it was a pretty hard-hitting match, which is what you want out of a cage match, regardless of gender. Yeah, and it had the, it had the memorable moment of uh, Mickey coming off the top of the cage as well. So, you know, it, it, it was good, but yeah, they could have made a lot more of it. Yeah, it, it's a shame. It's, it, was, it was a positive move with too many negatives yeah I, I can't i can't not what the girls did let's put it that way they did what they went out and they were told to do and they did it very well I it's just I, the I way the match is booked and promoted i think what they had was a personal pride of wanting to do well in the main event of a tv show uh, mm. you know so that, that's why they went out there and they tried as hard as they did uh, and full respect to them for that didn't really uh, carry over into the next week though where there was pretty much no mention of of what they did there's no video package to show how awesome it was none of that they just went on and had had a, a, a tag match in the Knockouts Tag Tournament, which brings us round as to why they're having a Knockouts Tag Title Tournament. Yes, Ayako Hamada has been released from her uh, TNA contract. Sounds like she asked for it, and it happened quite a while ago too. Uh, it's 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 weird how it all uh, it all came around. It, 
uh, and that that knockouts tag team title seems to be um, pretty much cursed as well. I mean, it, it's it's a pointless belt. There's absolutely no need to have the championship. There's not enough girls to justify, and certainly not enough regular tag teams to justify having knockouts tag team titles. That's why Mickey James was put in the semi-finals of the tournament and didn't know who her partner was. I know. I know, and they yeah had a, had a sort of a throw a thrown together team of of Sarita and Daphne, which seems such a shame as well. Um, but then that was just a four with a few between Velvet Sky and Sarita. Those knockouts tag belts were originally designed for one reason, yeah, and that was to give people. them to the beautiful people. Yeah, and then Angelina had her visa issues and stuff, and she had to leave, and they threw things together, and that now they have the opportunity to make the beautiful people tag champs and. Spoiler alert, everybody. Just If you don't want to know who wins the tournament, then uh, just wind on about five to ten seconds. But the winners of the Knockouts Tag Title Tournament are going to be Angelina Love and Winter. Don't ask. I, 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 I won't. Um, but yeah, um, as far as as far as Hamada is concerned, um, it's difficult really to sort of... Um, it's difficult really to assess the situation because we don't really know exactly what's happened. We assume that she asked for her release. We don't know that for certain. The one thing that we do know is that TNA never really knew what to do with her because she didn't speak English. <laughs> and even though she was, you know, the best wrestler on the roster, regardless of gender, um, they for somehow couldn't couldn't see a way to use her. Um, Which makes you wonder why they brought her in in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Why sign someone if you then have no idea what to do with them? Uh, and as well, as far as uh, Hamada is concerned, uh, I know Dave Prezak of, of Shimmer said that uh, you know when she uh, got her release, he he got his deposit back that he had booked through TNA to book her for the next set of Shimmer tapings. So, you know, at this point, we don't know whether uh, Hamada is going to be able to be on the next Shimmer tapings or not. It's going to be down to uh, to Dave uh, possibly to uh, organise something with her directly if needs be. Um, but either way, it might it might be a, a sad day for people who have been used to seeing Hamada regularly in the U.S. She might not be here very often. Mm. A, uh, an interesting fact for you, just to just leave you on the Hamada thing, is that uh, out of the whole time that she was with TNA, which was about what 15 months, something like that, probably. Yeah. Do you know how many pay-per-views she was on? I'm going to say none. None. Absolutely none. Right. Beautiful. Way to go, boys. Um. I- as far as that championship is concerned as well I mean she's been two time champion and I'm sure you could probably uh, count on the fingers of one hand the amount of title defences that she's had I can't think of that many <laughs> you know as well and this is this, this is what's even funnier is that the, the longest reigning champions in knockouts tag team titles history were the tag team of Hamada and Taylor Wilde you'd be shocked to know that wouldn't you <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Um, I ah, never mind those belts. <laughs> as far as uh, as far as wrestling through the uh, through the rest of the the world is concerned, um, what have we got? Ring of Honor uh, showcased the Women of Honor on their final battle uh, I pay per view this past uh, weekend. Yeah, a match that was described by. Uh by Mr. Brian Alvarez and Mr. Dave Meltzer uh, on their on their sort of wrap up uh, of Final Battle as being really really good. Now you can't ask for more than that, can you? No kidding. Um, with uh, what three three former guests on the show, in fact. Yes, yeah. So uh, we need to sort out the fourth. We do. It was Daisy Hayes and Amazing Kong versus Serena Deeb and Sarah Del Rey. There you go. That's one I think for uh, for fans of uh, women's wrestling. You want to have some sort of alternative to the uh, knockouts and the divas. That's one you want to look out for as well. Oh, without doubt. You've also had quite a lot of uh, different action going on around uh, around America, definitely. You, you had uh, Lefisto versus uh, Del Rey in Jersey All Pro Wrestling recently. You had uh, Lefisto wrestling Calamity, Calamity's first trip uh, from, from Canada into the United States, and apparently that went down really well. Yeah, I'm sure it won't be here last. So, yeah, there is a lot of women's wrestling going on. It's going to be very, very busy around sort of March time next year as well, so there's probably going to be something going on that's, that's pretty close by to you. Hang on, what was that? I don't know. Since when did we have a door? I, I know we're, we're here at the Women of Wrestling Grotto, but um, I don't know. I, let, let's find out. Hang on. I am the ghost of podcasts past. 
It's Alice in Danger, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Yay me! Hi, guys. <laughs> Alice in Danger, what are you doing here? Well, you summoned me. I Isn't did. that how it works? Did I pop out of like a Christmas coated, like what are those things? Lamps. I'm the I'm like a genie. But enough of that crap. Where's my present? What do you mean? Where's your present? Where's your Amazon wish list? I'll send it to you later. Okay, that sounds good. Ho ho ho, gentlemen. Let's talk about some hoes. <laughs> let's talk. Of, <laughs> let's let's yeah. Well, let's move on from that. Actually, uh, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about that in private because you know. Okay. We are going to Las Vegas later this year, um, but the, um, the the reason you're you're on the show, I assume, is to uh, discuss the uh, recently announced and the much delayed announced return <laughs> of pro of pro wrestling Sun. Yes, we're only three three months behind, right? Yeah, for 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 those of you who who don't know, we we actually had recorded about uh, fifteen minutes of of chat with Alice in Danger about three months ago with regards to this uh, announcement, and uh, it, it had to get delayed and delayed and delayed to the point where well, we're just re-recording it. Why not? Yeah, you guys just want to get me on the Skype, you know it. Yeah, just for a frame of reference, um, when we did record this, the other parts that we did talk about was Serena being released from WWE and whether she'd show up at Shimmer. So that kind of gives you an idea about how long ago we spoke to Danger about this. Yes. Yeah. But um, that was many moons ago. <laughs> it really was. Um, <laughs> but let's uh, let's let's move on and let's talk about Pro Wrestling Sun. Now it's finally been announced. Um, for those people who haven't listened to the audio be update we did or haven't read the press release, give us the, the sort of the overview. What's going on with Pro Wrestling Sun? What is it? Okay, well, f- for people that don't know, Pro Wrestling Sun was a woman's company that was founded in Japan, and it ended up quietly, as they put it, going into hibernation when Hikaru and Seki Mamura retired from competition. Now, um, the president of Zero One Max. Mr. Nakamura, he was kind enough to essentially hand it over to World One. And Pro Wrestling Sun is now going to be an all-women's pro wrestling group in association with World One Wrestling based out of Jackson, New Jersey. Uh huh. And the first date for the return of uh, Pro Wrestling Sun has been set for that very location on the 20th of March. Yes. March 20th will be debuting the new Pro Wrestling Sun. Um, it's going to have a different format as opposed to what we had in Japan, which I actually got to work with Pro Wrestling Sun in Japan, so this is nice. Okay. It's myself, um, Kong, Vesna, um, Panther Claw, Raka Khan. Wow. I remember that stable. Yes, R.E.M. The Real Real Evil Evil Makers. makers. Yeah. That that was a lot of fun. I remember when we first, when I first got to Japan, 2006, well, the third time I got there, when I first landed, we went straight from the airport right to the zero one offices and we started cutting some promos right there and getting some stuff ready for samurai tv and there is one particular promo i don't know if it's out somewhere on the uh interesting web but it's myself raka khan who was panther claw then and uh kong and somehow, for whatever reason, during the course of the promo, I look over and she is drawing a giant dinger on the event poster during the promo. Nice. And the uh, the person that was violated on the poster happened to be holding a microphone. And she turned that microphone into a twig and berries. A giant twig and berries. More like a branch and berries. <laughs> And I, it was all I could do not to not to completely lose it during the filming of that promo. And they showed it on air, but they they blurred out the dinger. So, so if anyone out there anywhere. wants to try and find it, because it's a funny ass promo. <laughs> Indeed, but, so. And w- w- will we have much more uh, branch and dingers in uh, Pro Wrestling Sun US? I'm I'm gonna try and keep those to to a minimum. Right. I'm hoping nobody's gonna be running in and drawing them on the walls, especially at that building because it is a nice building and I would hate to lose it. <laughs> um, but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing a whole new format that I don't even know if it's been done or anything similar to it. But what I'm doing is I'm having a double roster for Sun. 
there is going to be a veteran squad and there is going to be a rookie squad. And each person on a roster will be representing their home fed, much like what World One does. Mm-hmm. You know, each of their participants represents a different federation. Some will some will represent World One. Some might represent Pro Wrestling Respect. Um, they could do Ring of Honor or whatever. So it's a uh, it's going to be an exciting concept. The uh- the rookie roster will be fighting each other. The veterans will be fighting each other. And as the rookies start gaining ground, gaining wins, eventually they will have opportunities to wrestle the veterans and move up to that squad. Okay. And, and then so. at that point, uh, do they stay on that squad then, or can you be relegated from the veterans uh, out of the promotion, or what happens? I actually haven't gotten that far in deciding. I'm, I'm only a few months down the line in terms of what booking and, and and angles and matches that I'm trying to make. So down the line, I'm going to see, you know, maybe maybe if they do well against the vets, they can stay on the vet squad, or they might get sent back down, sent down to the minors. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll run it like some baseball. Well, considering that you, this is quite an ambitious plan involving – uh, presumably quite a lot of different promotions you must have been in touch with quite a lot of different feds yes so far i have um and and you know what no one's turned us down like everybody that we've talked to has been right into it they're they're really into it and the concept and i mean it, it gets their people out it gets especially with the rookies it gets younger girls chances to get out get to fight different people and I think it's going to be a big growing opportunity. It's going to be, it's going to be small at first. Like we're not talking like giant shimmer-sized pack rosters. It's it's going to be very small, and there's going to be, to use Lee's verbiage, baby steps going on. Mm-hmm. But I would rather go slow and steady and win that race than go, you know, balls to the wall straight out of the gate. But so. Yeah. Uh, he- well, you mentioned about starting off small. Is it going to be sort of national stuff that you're going to be dealing with, national girls? Or are you going to be um, maybe looking internationally? I've already looked internationally. It's just making sure that we have the fundage and – I just made that word up. The, the fundage, fundage. Fundage. The fundage. You know, the not only the are they going to get paid, they're going to get bound to a wall after the show. Um, no, it's – I'm definitely thinking internationally in terms of talent – so, but like I said, probably right out the bat, we won't be doing international talent, but down the line, I definitely would like to bring some in. You're going to be recognizing the World One Women's title as well. Absolutely, because I have it. It's mine. It's my title. Well, that helps. You know I'm the World One champion. Well, we were going to ask about this. Yeah, yeah so. because Wikipedia is a little bit behind. It is, which is funny because... You know, usually they're doing all sorts of stuff. Did you read my Wikipedia lately? Apparently, I wrestled Michelle McCool in a dark match and broke my nose. Really? Did you really? What was that like? Well, according to Wikipedia, I have. And you know what? I'm not actually taking that down. Let people think I've had dark matches. Tell us about this match. Tell us about this match that you supposedly had. Well, she was quite nice. Um, It was in somewhere USA. Um, the name of the venue escapes me, Madison Square, maybe. That sounds kind of familiar. But, yeah, we had a dark match, and I believe she drop-kicked me in the nose and broke my nose. Wow, she doesn't know how to work. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. She's this was. The, she's the diva of the year, however. Is she really? Mm, she, won a, she won a battle royal to prove that. Oh, wow. That kind of sucks. <laughs> I don't know. I know who my diva of the year would have been, but I'm biased, so. Go on, tell me who your diva of the year would have been. Oh, Natty, without a doubt. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, choice. this interesting. has been a good year for her. Yeah, you no, know, she got her first title run there, and you, and they got that big pay per view coming up with the chair, or not chairs, tables. Indeed. Of course, by the time this podcast is released, that would have already happened. So, congratulations or commiserations to Natty. Yeah, <laughs> come on, Natty and Beth. I hope you have won by the time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> We should have so recorded this on Monday. Yeah. yeah. I still probably wouldn't know. <laughs> That's all right. Um, as, far as, the, uh, as far as the roster is concerned, then, I mean, c- can you tell us anybody so far that's, that's in the frame to be uh, on that first show? Well, I can tell you the first two members of the veteran squad. Ooh, okay. Um, the first one, and, uh, and representing both of these 
females will be representing World One as their Fed. Um, actually, one will be representing World One. One will be representing Pro Wrestling Sun, and the Pro Wrestling Sun person, of course, will be me because I'm the current World One Women's Champion and President of the company. So I will be representing the company in battle. I'm going to be a fighting yourself. champion. Look at me. I know. Put myself over. So unlike a wrestler. I know. <laughs> um, and the other person is a World One staple for women, and that will be Roxy Cotton. She's also been grandfathered by the veteran squad. Do you know, I, I've been I've been sort of following a little bit of Roxy Cotton recently. Um, uh, Sassy Steffi had a video of her and, and Roxy when they went up to the uh, NCW Femme Patel show last time, when they had a video of them when they just reached the Canadian border. And Roxy Cotton fascinates me. She's a funny she's, girl. She's just amazing. She can rattle off entire monologues without taking a breath. Yes. She's she's quite chatty. Very hyper. But, um, yeah, she's she's a nice girl. Great girl. Um, you know, has, a lot of people don't realize she's been around for quite a long time. She wrestled under a different name in the beginning of her career. And I've actually wrestled her under that name. It was, uh, I want to say, Fever. And this was way back in the day, like... Early, early danger career in Philadelphia, I wrestled with her. And um, then I've wrestled her again a couple times with World One. And she's definitely improved over the years. You know, she's got new gear. She's got a new look. But she's still crazy. She is a crazy girl. But, you know, she's done a lot with World One. She's been their champion. She's at every show. So I think she'll do good in representing World One for a pro wrestling son. I like the fact that the Roxy Cotton's going to be part of this because she's just. I, I think of Roxy Cotton and I think of her promos, and I can't help but have a smile on my face. So fair play. There's there's one promo where she's with a guy, and I can't remember her name. It. I'm still kind of groggy from sleeping this morning, so. Um, but he was talking about something, and she just kept jumping in and jumping in and just wouldn't shut up, and like the facial expressions and how she was completely blind to the fact that she was annoying everybody in the promo. I just thought it was really funny. If you look at her Glory Wrestling profile, it's written like she would talk. It's fantastic. Is it really? Let's look at that. Yeah. So, so, so how it started. I like always watching wrestling with my daddy growing up. I would love to wrestle the boys on my block. I was so I was totally such a tomboy. Then I saw the unreal story of pro wrestling where they said Moolah had a school. So I said, I'll go online and find it. But like I never did find it. But like, oh my God, I never did find out where JPW had a school. So I went. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> this did you just make that up or did you actually read that? I'm reading this. Oh my God, that's hilarious. That's exactly what it says. <laughs> this woman is amazing. Oh my goodness. She is a funny girl. I'm like a ballet girl from Cali, totally straight out of the 80s. I'm so sure. <laughs> <laughs> With the crimped hair. Oh my goodness. Stop it. I'm going to start crushing on Roxy Cotton. Yeah, Are you really? I don't know, you know. It's, it's going to be a case of I'm just going to have to start dressing like a yuppie and have a mobile phone that's as big as Zach's from Saved by the Bell. Oh, yes! With the big, long antenna. I was, I was so a Zach girl. Really? Yeah. Slater had that mullet. I wasn't talking I about Slater. Like then. Huh? I thought you'd be a Screech fan. Are you kidding? <laughs> I, know how, I know how you're hot for the nerds. I'm hot for the nerds, but the British nerds, the David Tennant's of the world. Oh, I thought she was talking about me for a second. No. Sadly not. No. Oh. There, there's, only, there's only one gay guy I crush on. That's John Barrowman. I don't know where to follow. go from that. So, you know, I'll leave that one <laughs> hanging in the air. Yeah. All right. Well, well that's... It, it was a shot at you, so but you missed This it. is a married woman, ladies and gents. Oh, my goodness. I am reading her thing. Oh, my gosh. I also managed Jackal and Christopher Robbins. No, not the boy from Winnie the Pooh. But Fantastic. I would totally like to just wrestle. Somebody should just read this to her. It's just a completely monotone thing. But any reason to buy a new outfit, I'm, like, so all for it. So I was originally trained at JAP and then PWU. And You're reading like a 14-year-old reading Shakespeare in an English class. Yes. No, because a 14-year-old reading Shakespeare has to stop and try and figure out what the hell Shakespeare was writing in some of these words. How do I pronounce this? What? For the record, I did spend four months studying Macbeth, line by line. Wow. You are yes. a slow reader. <laughs> no, I'm an excellent reader, by the way. 
Says the girl who already is halfway through the Russell Brand book, Somebody Bought Her. Wow. Impressive. Thanks. All right, lovely. <laughs> but uh, I have your wish list saved. I get paid on Monday. Really? Somebody yeah. bought me a tea kettle. To whoever it is, I don't know who you are quite yet, but I have my suspicions. Thank you. Somebody bought me an electric tea kettle, so I know it was someone from the UK. It had to be someone from the UK, did it? Yes. Why? Because do you really think anybody from the US would think to buy something like that? I... <laughs> well done there for insulting an entire nation. No, why? Entire nation of Americans? Yeah, I'm in talking America, about the Americans, yeah. In America, we don't use electric tea kettles. We use microwaves. In the UK, we use electric tea kettles. You use microwaves? Yeah. How but do you what? think I heat my tea in the morning? I throw a cup of tea in the... Throw the bag, pour in the water, throw it in the microwave, two minutes, bada bing, I'm done. You what? What is wrong with you people? What do you mean? You act like I'm a barbarian. That is sacrilege for God's sake. What about the care and love you have from 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 using the kettle, or better still, a teapot? Oh, God, I sounded so English there. You really did. You I don't even really... drink tea. Nor do I, but I'm still appalled I... on behalf of our country. And then I sweeten it up with a spoonful of honey, no milk. That got me some odd looks when I first came over to your people's country. That's right, bastardizing our, our national drink. I remember, I remember going out to have tea, uh, tea with the Rileys, and they were always like, um, I'd ask for tea, and I'd say, no milk, please. And they're like, what? Why? I'm like, because <laughs> you're weird. Tea, drinking tea. No, we just don't put milk in it. They put milk in coffee, and I don't drink coffee, so. I don't even want to ask how you make your coffee in that case. Probably in a nuclear I, reactor or something. Possibly, yeah. No, no, we have a coffee pot here. It's not really... It's an we, ornament, we, isn't it? Well, yeah, like, my parents are in town right now, so they use the coffee pot. And, like, whenever uh, Claudio Castagnoli's in town, he'll use the coffee pot. But my husband and I don't drink coffee, so... Otherwise, it's just going to sit. And I won't put tea through a coffee pot because it makes the tea taste like coffee. Like, that stuff sticks in a coffee pot. People do not realize. You cannot brew both in the same container. It just doesn't work that way. Nasty. We're it's learning so up. much right now. Yeah, really. It's like, yeah. And it has nothing to do with wrestling, which is funny because that's what this podcast is about. It is. It is. <laughs> well, look, before, uh, before we let you go, let's go back and hit the main points of this Pro Wrestling Song thing again. Presumably, these are all going to be coming out on DVD as well. I believe that is the game plan. For those of us who cannot be in uh, New Jersey on the 20th of March. I know that's so sad that you won't be there. I know. Sorry. But I'll see you a week later. Yeah, you will. Yeah, I will. Because you know we're going to have to do a little shimmer, shimmer, shimmer while we're in Hammer. Chicago a week later. Man, March is going to be an awesome month for women's wrestling. Yeah, you've it's got, so busy. You've got Pro Wrestling you got Sun. Yeah. One week, pro Wrestling Sun the following week. Then you got Shimmer that third weekend. It's going to be nice. And there's also a uh, WSU pay-per-view during that uh, sort of three-week span as well, I think. Oh, really? I and then know. in the start of April, you've got Pro Wrestling Eve. Oh, wow, really? I didn't know that one either. Yeah, so basically all five sort of promotions are all running within the space of about six weeks. Yeah, two don't use me, so I don't... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> all around the same time as some, some little show called WrestleMania as well. Never heard of it. No, no. You'll never yeah. catch on. No. You'll, you'll never get booked in this town, WrestleMania. Well, they That's have they have once, and it was terrible, so yeah. Really? Well, WrestleMania 9 in Las Vegas was terrible. Oh, that was shite. As, as I, a- I'm so terrible. Like, I'm trying to remember the last WrestleMania. The one WrestleMania I saw that was... I was watching it in England in 2007. Paul Ash and I watched it together. And I remember staying up all night to watch it. Yeah, 2007. 23. Is that what it was? Yeah, Batista and Undertaker. Because I remember the year before, it was in Chicago. 2006 was Chicago, if I'm correct. It was. Because I was actually in Chicago that weekend, but I didn't go to the show. And then um, the following you year, fool. I was in England. Huh? Why? That had that Trish versus Mickey match that was just ridiculously loud and, and, and massively over and pretty much the only reason why people bought that show. Right? Yeah. I watched it, though. I watched it at, a, at someone's uh, house in Chicago because we were in that weekend for Ring of Honor. Because it was my birthday weekend. I turned 29 that year. All the great people are born around WrestleMania time. 
Is that a fact? Yeah. Oh, oh, I know why he says that. Yeah, because I was born around WrestleMania time. Uh, yeah, WrestleMania is every now and then falling on my birthday. It's only happened to me once, and it was WrestleMania <laughs> 9. How much does that suck? Oh, it was the bad one. <laughs> yeah, it steals my thunder when it falls on my birthday. But then celebrities die on my birthday, too, so. What? Selena got shot to death on my birthday. Brandon Lee shot to death on my birthday. Terry Schiavo disconnected on my birthday. So two and a half celebrities. Disconnected? Yeah. She was oh. she was this chick that um it was a big controversy in the US where she was on life support for so long and her husband kept saying, you know, take her off. There's no way she's gonna recover. And his parents like sued and fought and fought and fought and fought for years over the right to keep her on because they were waiting for a miracle. And finally the courts allowed him to take her off and, and die. <clears throat> so there was a big controversy about, you know, should they live, should they not, living wills, do we fight them? And, yeah, she ended up dying on my birthday. Totally stole your thunder. Uh, every year. Well, you realize every that year. next next birthday uh, we're going to be in Las Vegas and I have a hanker to shoot some guns. So, um... I don't know what's going to happen. Not at me. You have fun with that, because last time I shot a gun, I, hit, I shot a tree. And I what were you aiming for, just out of curiosity? A bird. I went <laughs> dove hunting once in, like, what was it, like 2000? No, 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 it was 1999. See, 1999. She... See, she is old, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey, shut it, you. I'm only good at shooting if it's out the back of a moving b wedge BMW, but that's another story. <laughs> um, yeah, that won't make it to air. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> I'm just going to have fun now and just kind of go into my happy place. Ooh, David Tennant, how you doing? And on that note... <laughs> on that note, we're going we're gonna to close the door on Alice in Danger while she uh, gets busy thinking about David Tennant. <laughs> Go, go drink I'll weird save tea. that for later. <laughs> uh, we married will... woman, married woman. Thank you guys. No problem. Well, thank you for dropping by, Ghost of Podcast Past. Yay! Bye. I'm fading, fading. Okay, well, <laughs> that was that was Alice in Danger there, the the Ghost of Podcast Past. Um, hmm, interesting. I'm not sure where this is going to go, but I've probably got an idea. Let's Depends say, if you know your old stories, ladies and gents. <laughs> Let, let's let's move on then, and uh, let's talk about what we were going to uh, talk about earlier on, and that is the uh, the wrestler of the year for 2010. Um, and this is something that we've uh, decided to award. You know, it's the end of the year; everybody does their year-end awards, but uh, I think we're pretty much well uh, versed to be able to make a, a pretty good decision on this based on uh, wrestling from all over the world Europe, Australia, America, Japan um, somebody that we think really represents the best of, uh, of women's wrestling someone who we think has had a, a banner year as far as her in-ring is concerned Yeah. Um, so we, uh, we, we consulted our committee of two yep and uh, and and we we, we came to we were, we came to a pretty much um, a, agreed opinion very quickly, didn't we? Well, we we came to a unanimous decision. Um, it was uh, it, it was more like um, well, that's obviously going to be this wrestler, and the other one went yes. <laughs> so it was a short consultation. Um, yeah. But I think the fact that there wasn't even a question in either of our minds particularly means that we're we're pretty confident and, and happy that the, this is the person that we're honouring. Uh, the uh, Wrestler of the Year Award for 2010, then, is going to go to Madison Eagles. I know, I know. There's probably a few people going, oh, no. <laughs> no but no, no, bear with us. Madison Eagles had a fantastic year in the ring. Yes, she did. Uh, Shimmer champion. Just, you know, her, her performance over the last set of tapings, especially, she defended the belt four times, was just incredible each match brilliant um her her change from being the you know baby face madison eagles to being the the heel madison eagles the i love me narcissistic heel brilliant her stuff in australia where she's uh, you know the the matriarch of the scene over there and current pwwa champion indeed so she's she's done so well for herself over there as well she's brought on a whole new generation of women's wrestlers over there 
And those those shows, the the PWA show, including the Last Woman Standing show, again, something you need to check out. You buy those DVDs, damn it. Just buy them. Yeah. And here's a woman as well who, in uh, 2010, made her Japanese debut as well. Uh, was over there last month, in fact, in November. Um, went one-on-one, Shimmer Champion versus Neo Champion. Went to a 20-minute draw with uh, Yoshiko Tamura. And I think made quite a lot of friends and influenced quite a lot of people in Japan. So here's somebody who is, uh, you know, really expanding the brand of uh, of Madison Eagles worldwide, uh, and somebody who I think has just had a, a year that needs to be um, recognised. So we we let Madison Eagles know about uh, us, us awarding her the. Uh, wrestler of the year for 2010 and we asked her for some comments and uh, she said fuck off and then <laughs> after she uh, after I, I begged her a little bit more and said that she was fantastic and she was amazing and everybody loved her she decided to send us a few a few words so uh, i'm just going to read this verbatim from from the the message that she sent to us she says it has been one of the best years i've had in wrestling so far starting with winning the shimmer belt to which i hold with a great responsibility Having the opportunity to go to Japan and working with the great Tamura and not failing in an epic way, dealing with many injuries that my husband had to listen to me complain about on a regular basis, and by far having such a great response from all the fans around the world. On top of everything, getting this award is the icing on the cake before the year ends. The support you blokes and everyone like you gives us girls is what keeps women's wrestling thriving. I hope to keep moving forward, and I'm keen to see what 2011 brings. And just remember, even though I love me, doesn't mean you can't either. Seriously. Beautiful. It's quite Madison touching. Eagles. <laughs> quite touching in its own way. Yeah, and when she says "I love me," if you remember that listening on to the uh, Shimmer Roundtable wrap-up that we did in September, you know what "me" stands for. <laughs> Indeed. So that that's our uh, our wrestler of the year. Oh, okay. Hang on a minute. We got another guest here. Lee, do you want to get the door? Oh, why is it always me? <laughs> it's your turn. It's always my bloody turn. I am the ghost of podcast presence. It's Kelly Skinner, everybody. Well, now that we've got the, you know, age out of the way. Ooh. Oh, but you're not talking about danger, are you not? Well, of course. I heard she was, you know, the ghost of uh, past, and <laughs> it's kind of obvious why. Oh, she's going to kill you the next time she sees you. Bring it on. Yeah, that's what that's what we like to see. But yeah, so well, what what are you actually doing here then? Well, you know, I heard you guys were doing the Women Wrestler of the Year, and I figured I was chewing, so I'm here to collect my award. Uh, don't know if you heard or not, but it's not actually uh, it's not it's not actually you. Well, this is awkward. What? Um, it is an Australian. Oh, though. Who is it? it? It is an Australian, though. It's Madison Eagles. Did you even watch PWWA? I beat Madison Eagles. Doesn't that automatically make me champion of it? Well, this is an interesting point that you made, because you did win the uh, PWWA Last Woman Standing Tournament earlier on this year, uh, and you did beat Madison Eagles in, in the final match. Uh, that was... Uh, we, we, well, I think we both owned that, uh, that DVD, and that was one hell of a tournament. Thank you. I mean, it really did suit me being indestructible and all. I mean, Last Woman Standing, it has my name written all over it. She does have a point. She does have a very good point. Maybe it was sort of swayed to your favour slightly. Um, but as far as that tournament's concerned, it's 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 a pretty big thing to 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 go out and win this, win that tournament, um, especially beating the likes of who you did beat. Yeah, it was definitely one of the top uh, career moments for me. I was pretty proud of myself. Went out and celebrated a bit afterwards. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't have you to chop there. That's a, that's actually a fair point. For anybody who uh, who isn't initiated to the relationship between the rate tank Kelly Skater and myself, she hits me a lot. <laughs> hey, come on, it's you deserve it. It's called in the business an abusive relationship. It really is. <laughs> but uh, you know, regardless of uh, regardless of hitting Lee, um, hey. uh, how's how's 2010 been for you? Pretty much. 2010 was actually a pretty good year for me. I've done a lot of things that I've been pretty happy with. Um, Last year in the show, I had a really, really good time. I was really happy to get Serena's return match. Um, that's actually probably, apart from the PWWA tournament, my highlight of 2010. Just to hear the fan reaction to that match was crazy. Um, I went to America twice. Uh, stayed three weeks each time. 
So 2010 has been a really fun year. Done a lot of fun shows in Australia, a lot of fun stuff in America. It just seems to be getting better and better for me. Well, we talked to Serena about that return uh, when she was on the show um, a little while ago. And, I mean, let's get your opinion on it as well. How difficult was it for you not to to break character when there was that huge sort of response from the crowd, everybody looking behind you, behind you, uh, and you had to just, you know, keep your character? I'll, I'll be honest, I just wanted to smile because um, Serena is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Hands down, she's just a beautiful person, and to hear her get that reaction... It was one of those moments where I was just trying so hard not to smile because she really deserved it. So you had your moment in the ring with Serena, and then the next day you threw out what's becoming one of your sort of infamous open challenges, which pretty much just end in doom yeah. and death for you. Uh, yeah, I'm really going to stop doing those. Well, I don't know, because I'm thinking your idea of success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm when it comes to these open challenges. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not so sure it's failure. I'm still standing. You are still standing, but there's a lot of L's in that column, really. Uh, that's, yeah, we don't want to talk about that. Well, you did you did wrestle Amazing Kong on um, our only appearance on the last set of tapings uh, for the for the DVD. Yeah. But as far as these open challenges are concerned, they really are sort of picking up momentum, because pretty much everybody knows that when 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 you make an open challenge, something big is going to happen. Yeah, well... Uh... It seems that people seem to really like answering my open challenges, and I think, you know, they have been fairly entertaining, so I guess they're doing their purpose. Do you have an eventual aim, then, I mean, in, in your head somewhere, about where it's all going to go um, eventually? Not really. I'm just kind of going along for the ride at the moment, but uh, it'd be nice if I could start winning the challenges. Yeah, maybe you need to work out more, eh? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the gun show is pretty impressive. That is, yeah. That's, that's you true. do work out a lot, though. I mean, every time I see you doing some kind of status update on Facebook, you seem to have been been doing, what is it, P90X, or you, you're playing volleyball, or you're doing something that, that's athletic. Yeah, I do um, spend a lot of time working out. It's just pretty much one of my hobbies. And uh, I do Muay Thai kickboxing. Um, I box. Beach volleyball, gym. Um, Nikki Ruff has actually got me onto uh, these workouts, which are working really well for me. So yeah, you, do, you have your, you, you know. yeah, you have your international gangster thing going as well. There's probably a few people who don't know about <laughs> this international gangster thing. So just tell us a bit about it. Okay, well, it pretty much started because uh, when Jen Blake actually come back to Shimmer, she was just super gangster. I don't know if you guys noticed, but she was rocking the hats and rocking the hoodies and stuff and it just kind of became a joke that um, her Mercedes and I were the international gangsters and it just snowballed from there and got absolutely ridiculous so if, if anyone messes with uh, Mercedes you know her Aussie international gangster has to step in which is why if you don't start being nicer to me Lee I'm going to seek my uh, Puerto Rican gangster onto you See, all these threats just aren't becoming of you. I mean, let's not forget which country owns which country here. Hey, hey, hey. You don't own us. I think it's not nice. Done. I think you're fine legally. That's getting I, racist. Yeah, I think you're fine legally. That's getting a little racist. <laughs> Look, it's nothing personal. It's just you were born in the wrong country. Well, I actually came from England. My granddad's from there, so I'm not a convict, if that helps. It helps a little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Aussies are still pretty rad. I, in fact, I do it's like a, Australia because thing. you guys are you guys are crazy. I, 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 I've I've been to Australia and I do I do like the place and it just it's, it's just a really nice country. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like living here. But you are spending a lot more time you know, in America as well. Yes, um, I really like America as well, just for the opportunities. I mean, Australia, even though it's a sporting nation, for wrestling it's a lot smaller. So if you want the opportunities, you really have to get out of the country. And thankfully, America is giving opportunities to people like myself, Madison, Jesse, Tennille, that want to travel. Is it something you could see yourself doing um, permanently, as in move to America permanently, if you could if you could do that? If I could, I would love to. At least, for, you know, while I was wrestling. I mean, I think eventually I'd want to come back to Australia and settle down. But while I was wrestling, I would love to live in America where, where the action is. 
Uh, doesn't the ghost of podcast past have a plan for that? <laughs> yeah. Um, Danger's plan is to marry me off so that I can be her neighbour. She doesn't care to who, I don't think. It's more of a getting me married type of thing because I very stupidly was just kind of blase about it. I mean, oh, yeah, sure, sure, you can pick my future husband, just mucking around, and, yeah, I think I'm going to lose her regret that statement. Well, you know, I've got somewhat of a similar deal with the ghost of podcast past myself, so... Yeah, we could all end up we could all end up being neighbours in about three years' time. Who knows? I pity the poor fuckers who are marrying you. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Who are you talking to? Her or me? Choose. <laughs> oh. Remember, remember. Uh, look, I'm pretty I, deadly, look, look thank you. I, I figure that come March of the next shimmer tapings, I'm screwed. So I might as well just uh, just just go for it. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, you should just accept my challenge. I'll call out another open challenge. You can come out and I'll finally win one. Oh, I don't I'm think I can do that. that. No, I don't think I can do that. I've got brittle bones and I bruise easy. <laughs> so I've seen. I have a million excuses for not doing anything physical. That's why you're scorny. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Well, look, we've, we've had this thing uh, on the last few podcasts where we've uh, we've been asking people... Uh... Oh, you know, you know where I'm going here. But you, we've we've been asking people, have you got any good Kelly Skater stories? Because everybody has, and everybody seems everybody seems almost scared to tell us, um, at least on the air. Um, g- given given that you're actually yeah. here and you're actually here now, um, have you got any good Christmas Kelly Skater stories? Any good Christmas ones? Um, actually, Christmas is the one time of the year I'm really well behaved. Oh. It's Christmas, I spend it with my elderly grandma. <laughs> but uh, there's, there's a reason they don't tell the Kelly Skater stories, let's put it that way. I could get myself in a little bit of trouble here. Does your grandma know anything about what you do in the other 364 days of the year? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to hide the fact I had a tattoo for about nine months. And uh, let's just put it in face. If my nana ever got a Facebook, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's like the first rule of Kelly Skater stories is you do not talk about Kelly Skater stories. Exactly, because it doesn't only incriminate myself, but quite a few other people in general. Ah, uh, lovely. So I'm thinking if you want to ever be part of a Kelly Skater story, you have to be there in person for it to see it happen, yeah? Pretty much. It's now there's an invitation uh... to come to Shimmer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do, you know, we make the after party. So, cheap chill, come to Shimmer, come to the after party. You will not regret it, trust me. Well, I have to say that you uh, have been one of the people who has been sort of most requested on a regular basis for us to speak to. So, uh, yeah, I, we appreciate you uh, you calling in and being our, our ghost of podcast present. No worries. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, before we do let you go, um, let's have a quick look forward to 2011. Um, we just talked about Shimmer, but what else have, uh, what else have you got on the plate? Well, at the moment, um, I have NHPW coming up in February. We've actually got NHPW versus Ring of Honor. So we've got a few of the Ring of Honor guys coming down, which should be pretty exciting for, you know, the local guys. Mm-hmm. Um, NCW, which is a fed in Victoria. So if you're in Australia listening to this, come down and support it. Uh, Shazza and I will be continuing our feud in a submission patch. Um I'm sure you'll see more of me in the States. I've already got a few plans to head over uh, fairly soon. And I'm hoping to make my debut in a couple of countries in the next year. Mm. Ooh, anywhere that you can that you can let us know about? Not yet. Ooh. But when I do know, I'll let you guys know. Sweet. Excellent. And yeah, you'd be surprised. We have a lot of uh, Australian listeners. So, yeah, if you're, uh, if you're down in... Uh our antipodes go along and support the rate tank or boo the rate tank, whichever you want to do. Our antipodes. I'm sure they'll boo Indeed so. All right, then. Well, thanks for coming along, and uh, I don't know, I just, Lee, I get the impression that we're probably going to get another visit before the end of the evening. Oh, I do hope so, otherwise it doesn't really complete the circle, does it? <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks once again, rate tank. We'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Thanks for having me, guys. So, we've had the... Ghost of Podcast Past and the Ghost of Podcast Present. I think you can see where this is going. Well, yeah, I better hope we we, we better have a, a a Ghost of Podcast yet to come, or uh, well, this gimmick's going to be an epic fail. It is, yeah. So while we patiently wait for their cue, um, there, there's another piece of business. 
that we have to deal with because we've done the Wrestler of the Year award, yes. and that would normally be the end of that. Yes, but we couldn't we couldn't finish this year without offering a Woman of the Year award as well. Now we've got the Wrestler of the Year award, which is based for what's going on with people in ring. And uh, you know, Madison Eagles is a very worthy winner of it, but we we felt like we couldn't end it there, so we, we've we've come up with a Woman of the Year award as well, which is for somebody who has not just had a, a good year in ring, but just had a had a, a good year overall, or had a positive year, and, and has got a positive message to share with us. So before I tell you who it is, I've got an email, um, not from the general manager. But from the recipient of the Woman of the Year Award, we asked her for a thought, and this is what she said. I'm very speechless, I must say. Never have I thought I would be chosen as Woman of the Year of any year. I always work hard, but I know I'm not the best out there. And honestly, I'm cool with that. As long as I'm having fun in the ring and I can make people happy in the crowd watching this little anime kicking ass and act funny, I think my job is done. 2010 has been a really tough year when it comes to the woman behind the character. I've had a bad relationship with a very good friend that ended badly. I lost my multimedia job. My doctor found precancerous cells near my ovaries and a hole in my heart. Actually, I can say that I'm very pleased to be here to accept this award because as I was lying on the stretcher back in April, the thought of not seeing the end of the year came to my mind. But hey, I'm here, alive, and want to focus on the positive. The end of the year seems to be a lot brighter. So to all the fans who are always there when I'm having a tough time, thank you. To the Women of Wrestling podcast team, thank you for giving us some of your airtime to speak our mind. Thank you for noticing and rewarding my efforts of being better in the ring, the effort I put in my diet and gym this year to be a healthier human being, and all the effort I put into NCW Femme Fatale as a champion, wrestler, and multimedia designer. 2010 was hell, but wrestling and many things that are surrounding it have always been good to me. Thank you. Happy holidays. And that's from our Woman of the Year for 2010, Lufisto. Yeah, I think we made the right decision there as well. It's a message which starts off, you know, really, really sort of depressing and ends up being really uplifting. She really is the poster child for turning a frown upside down. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it was it was one of those things. I don't remember if it was you or I that that, that sort of said, okay, we probably need to recognise Lefisto as well as uh, you know, as well as Madison. And it, the idea of just calling her the Woman of the Year just seemed uh, seemed pretty much perfect. Um, as far as uh, as far as a wrestler is concerned, to to go from the point where you're actually questioning your own mortality when you've you know found issues with your heart and you think that you know your career is over. And suffered a stroke as well. And suffered a stroke, and everything was just going wrong. To be able to come back and to to, to do as well as she's done, it, it's a real inspirational story. And we are really, really, really pleased and proud in our own little way just to, to notice that and to, uh, to to award her that Woman of the Year. I just think I said it. I said it before. And I don't think I said it on the on the podcast itself that when we interviewed her, but we did say. We, well, I did say to other people that you know, Lufisto is, is is one of my heroes. You know, she she's one of these people who who always just seems to fight against the odds and will always always do it with a smile on her face and will always keep battling. She's not a quitter, and I really admire that about her. And I genuinely can't think of anybody else who would be more deserving of this award than her. Absolutely. So, well done to Lufisto. And uh, if you want to see what she has been up to recently, you know her main. Uh, her main aim this, this past year, her, her her main thing this past year has been NCW Fan Fatale. Go and check out the, uh, the the website. Check out the MySpace, I think, for uh, English uh, language news as well. But order yourself some of those DVDs as well. Check out some of the matches she's had, especially uh, the first of her match she had against Sarah Del Rey, uh, as well as her her uh, march to the Fan Fatale title on uh, Volumes 3 and 4. I can't add anything more to that. I don't think there's anything else that needs to be added. So, no. uh, I mean, on that note, I think we're getting ready basically to uh, to bring the podcast to an end. But, you know, it's just this funny feeling that sometime around now, there's going to be a knock at the door. Do regular as clockwork. There you go. Um, shall I get it this time? Yeah, yeah, you get it. Seriously, I can't be bothered. <laughs> I'm the ghost of podcasts yet to come. It's Rhea O'Reilly. Now, there's probably some people who are listening to this going, who? But just stick with us. 
this is this is kind of the point. Um, you know, one of the things that we have with this uh, with this podcast is an audience of people, and uh, there's an audience of people who've never heard of Rhea O'Reilly, and uh, it's an audience of people who are probably, but this time next year, going to know who she who she is. Yeah, this is our also our first tricontinental podcast, as it turns out. Indeed, we have. We've uh, we've covered America, we've covered Australia, now we're covering Europe. And uh, Rhea, welcome to the uh, Women of Wrestling podcast Grotto. And uh, let's let's uh, let's talk about uh, what you've been up to and, and, and what you got coming up as well. First question I have for you is: mm-hmm. What does a girl from Northern Ireland who was studying at university uh, do, or what goes wrong in your brain to make you want to decide well, I want to go to Canada to be trained by Lance Storm to wrestle? Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people asked me that when I did it. Um, I actually wanted to go and do wrestling before I went to university, and uh, uh, it kind of all fell through, and um, I kind of forgot about it and went, yeah, it's a really silly idea, and let's not do that, and uh, pleased my parents by going off to university in England. I did my degree and uh, in, in yeah forensic psychology and loved it, um, but then I finished uni, and I didn't really want to go do my master's. I didn't know what to do, and I had a good job and everything, but I was like, I don't want to do this, and I, I don't want to be here, and I don't know what I want to do, and then someone said why don't you go back to wrestling? And I went, hmm. Had a little thought about it and kind of researched online and found out that Lance had opened a school and I'd always thought he was a really good wrestler and went, well, why not? And I emailed him, got signed up for the school and the day he emailed me, I walked into work and handed him my notice and went, "Uh, I'm leaving, I'm going to move to Canada and be a wrestler and that was it. So, (laughs) What sort of looks did you get from your people at your work when you said that? Uh, yeah, some some interesting ones. I mean, they all yeah, I was a wrestling fan, but they were like, "You're you're gonna go be a wrestler." They were like, "But you're you're tiny. You can't be a wrestler." And <laughs> they all just thought I was completely insane. But at the same time, we're really supportive, and we're like, "If anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be you." So <laughs> it was good. And the thing I think people probably don't realise is you do this off your own dime. You move there, and you essentially just relocate out there. But how long is it? Three months. Yeah, I went out for about four months altogether. I just uh, saved up like money for two months and just uh, booked my flight and off I went. Yeah, so <laughs> it was good. I left a, like, a, a good, good, well-paid job and everyone thought I was totally insane. I was just like, no, I'm not happy. I want to go do something crazy. So off to Canada I went. <laughs> so what time of year was it when that you went there? Uh, I went in September, so when I got there, it was, um, it was actually okay, but I hate the cold, so... Um, Going to Canada was probably a really stupid thing, and I was so terrified. You wouldn't believe the amount of like layers I had with me. I had like so many clothes, but actually, I got there and it was sunny, so it was quite surprising. It, it, it presumably did not stay sunny for long. <clears throat> No, no, I got freakish snow and cold temperatures. I think I left before it got really insane, but like, yeah, it was like minus 10, minus 15 when I was there. And um, you kind of get used to it. It's a different cold to like in the UK and Ireland, so it's not as bad for some reason, but you, you just get used to it. And I was so excited to be there, like wrestling and having fun every day that like I kind of just ignored the cold and got on with it. So it wasn't so bad. Well, tell us about the training then, because you, know, you said that you know, I noticed Lance Storm had, had opened up a school, and I've, I've paid my money, and I've moved over there for four months, and I'm going to I'm going to train to become a wrestler. Tell us about day one. Uh, well, it was it was pretty scary. I mean, I arrived there like a few days before the training started, and uh, there was a bunch of us. Like Lance has a, a spare house, and five of us stayed there together, and so it was kind of scary. I think it was more terrifying being in the house and was the first person there so waiting for everyone else to arrive because you had no idea what everyone else was going to be like um i didn't know if there's going to be any other girls or or anything at all so i think that was really scary and then um by the time the first day of training came about there was five of us going together so it wasn't quite so terrifying going to the training um but it's like the training schools and um, it's a really good facility but it's like in an industrial estate so you get the bus there and it you just like, where the hell am I? I'm in the middle of nowhere. And it was kind of scary. And you walk in and like you see Lance Storm and you're just like, you don't know whether to like go up and be like, hi, how's it going? Or like to be really terrified of him. But um, after like after like half an hour, we were all at ease and it was pretty cool. So it was OK, actually. The first day was fine. It was more scary waiting to meet everybody in the house. That's like the first person into the Big Brother house, isn't it? You've got yeah. this brand new house, and all you know is someone's going to be coming soon, and you don't know when, and you don't know who. 
Absolutely. And it was like, I didn't know where in the world they were coming from, how much experience they had had, uh, like nothing. So it was, it was pretty scary. <laughs> Yeah, that's another point because you, you had a little bit of training here before, like years ago. You tried, I think, at the FWA for a short time, wasn't it? Yeah, I'd been to like one or two weekend camps. So I kind of knew, although I didn't have like any skills or ability, I kind of knew what I was getting myself in for, or I thought I did. So um, I'd had that little bit of training. But I, I knew some people that came to the school had already been wrestling on shows for over a year and stuff. So we were all at different levels. And I thought that was quite scary as well. So That's what I was going to say, because you were essentially a brand new <clears throat> beginner. Yeah. Uh, and how, how does that work as far as like people with different skill levels then? How does Lance work that? Is, 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 does he work slowly to keep people up to the speed uh, or, or does he have separate classes that he does different things with or how does it work? Well, um, to begin with, we all, you know, it, it, pretty much like when you go to any wrestling school, um, like whether it's a weekly one or, or an intense one like that, you start with going through your bumps and and all those sort of basics to to see where, where everyone's at and where their abilities are. And it was really interesting because we all started there and obviously some people were really good, but people dropped like flies. People dropped out of training in like the first couple of weeks. And I think we started with 15 and we ended with nine or something like that. A lot of people dropped through through right but when we started we all started with the basics and i was absolutely terrible and <laughs> um, <laughs> um i don't think uh, i think i maybe might have been the worst person there when i started i'm not sure <laughs> so it was quite amusing and um but then slowly everyone built up and then when we worked on things like match structure obviously the people who had uh, more experience and more ability were able to put on better matches and get different feedback and um but it worked really well and i think everyone learned a lot when we were there and um, especially on promo days, I think, because no matter like how many, long you've been cutting promos for, you can still be pretty terrible at them. <laughs> so did you ever think about dropping out then? Because, you know, other people did and you look around <laughs> and you're thinking, you know, they're dropping out um, and they think that they can't hack it. Can I hack it? Should I be here? Uh, yeah, definitely. And um, there was once or twice when I was like, I can't do this because it was like every day and you're beaten up and bruised and you hurt. And um, at one point I actually fractured my ribs. And at that point I did think about dropping out because I was just like in so much pain. But I took three days off and, and foolishly went back to training. So I was like, no, I want to do this. I'm here. And uh, and I just kept going. And it was funny because at the end, like, Lance said, like, when I started, he was like, I, I didn't think you were ever going to be any good at this, Rhea, but you've proved you're tough enough anyway. So <laughs> that was good. But, yeah, I did think about it once or twice. But, you know, when I thought about it and, and sort of said, I'm ne- like, to the other guys in the house, I'm never going to be good enough to do this. They were like, shut up, Rhea. Go to training tomorrow. And I was like, yeah, yeah, OK. <laughs> I guess it's more of a motivator then for you, isn't it? Because you all sort of band together. Yeah, definitely. So... It was hard, especially like um, when a couple of two of my good friends that I'm still in touch with like dropped out, and I think that was quite hard. But um, they were like, "No, it's just not for me." But they were like, "Really, you have to do this. <laughs> you clearly love it." So that's actually really nice because it's like a bit of a motiv- motivational thing as well. If you've got people who are training with you, are actually wanting you to do well as well, because you know they could be dicks and just say, "Yeah, drop out. You're rubbish." Yeah, I think um, I was really lucky with the group that I went with because we all really we gelled really well as friends and like we hung out together at like, training and and like we went to the gym together and all sorts. So I think we were a really lucky group that we all sort of supported each other and helped each other out a lot. So so you get you graduate from from the Storm Wrestling Academy, you get thrust mm-hmm. into the thrust into the wrestling world. Then what? What 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 happens to you? Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't I don't really know, you know, because I was a. Uh, I was kind of terrified because I was like, well, I have to go back to the UK now. A lot of the people were staying in Canada. There was a couple of people from Australia, some that were already wrestling and some were staying there and and things. So I was going back to the UK on my own and I was so scared. I was like, well, I don't know what to do now. Like they were like, well, you know, you can contact promoters or contact more training schools. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know what to do. So, um, I, I found out that um, from the FWA camp that I'd done before, I remember Justin Richards and um, kind of shoved his name on the internet and found out he was training in London. And so I just was like, I don't know if you'll remember me, but uh, hi, I'm wrestling again. Um, <laughs> is there any chance I can come and train with you? And he was like, he was like, Rhea, of course I remember you. Come train. So um, that was the first thing I did when I got back, straight back into training and uh, learnt I uh, found I'd learnt a lot of bad habits in Canada because the British style and the American style are very different and had to 
relearn some things when I came over here. <laughs> mm, so you got programmed only to be deprogrammed and then reprogrammed. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> It's funny, actually. I mean, you know, because you, you, you're still continuing to train with with uh, Justin as well. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of think of him in a certain way, of kind of like the the British Lance Storm in a certain way. You know, very technically sound. You know, very serious, but very dedicated. Um, did you what, what, compare the two of them as trainers? Uh, oh, that's a hard question. I think um, I think you're right that they are quite similar. Like they both have really strong work ethics, and they're both very passionate about their trainees. Like I, I mean, I can I don't know in in Canada. Like for example, there was one day like we came in, and uh, Lance was talking to two of us, and he was like, "Yeah, we woke up in the middle of the night with ideas for gimmicks for you guys." <laughs> and I was like, "But but what what? <laughs> go home. Don't think about us when you go home." And I think um, Justin's very much the same. Like things will crop up in his mind and, and we're never really out of his mind. So he he's constantly thinking of, of ideas for us or ways to help us and um both very strict trainers as well. Like they're they're fun and you have a good time with them but they want you they want you to be the best you can be and, and work towards like perfecting things, even the simplest little things until you can do them the best that you can. Mm-hmm. Well, you're wrestling about now. I think probably the the two biggest promotions that you're working for in Britain are uh, are Pro Wrestling Eve and uh, Extreme World Wrestling. So, um, should we yeah. start with Pro Wrestling Eve and just to, just you know, tell us a bit about uh, a bit about Eve and how that's how that's gone for you so far? Absolutely. Um, it was uh, really exciting. Um, it was actually in I think it was in January of uh, 2010, and um, the Eve sort of ran a or was it that? No, it wasn't. I don't know when it was. March? I can't remember. Right. <laughs> Eve did um, a training camp anyway. And um, I was so excited because basically since I came back to the UK, I hadn't wrestled any girls. I hadn't trained with any girls, really. And um, I was so excited to hear about this. And I thought like it was a massive opportunity. So I went and trained at this camp and met all these girls that were wrestling all over the UK. Um, I didn't know any of them. I'd never heard of any of them. But I was so excited to know that there were like other girls out there that were in like, a similar position to me. So um, I went along not really expecting very much and just really looking forward to training with other girls and, and getting some more experience and making some contact. And then um, and then a little while later, I got a call from the Eve promoter, Dan Reed, saying, uh, do you want to be on the, the debut show in May? And I was like, uh, what? Yes, of course I do. Um, I had uh, all I'd done before then was um, trainee shows. And so this was like a massive, massive uh, opportunity for me. Um, I would think I was the least experienced person on the show and was completely terrified on my way there. But um, I got to got to the venue and like spoke to everyone and there were some familiar faces and some people I didn't know and just talked to everyone and really got put at ease by how like really like awesome everybody was and uh and yeah it ended up being an amazing experience and I'm so glad that I got to do it uh for the second show as well. You were put into that uh, the, the the gym with with Becky James, who's also a a, a, a Lance Storm graduate. Uh, would that, mm-hmm. Did that mean you just had stuff to bounce off straight away that you could talk about? Um, I think uh, yeah. I mean, again, like we we never met each other. We didn't really know each other at all. So um, that was all right though, because yeah, we were like you train with Lance, yeah, you train with Lance, and talking about like the different experiences we had. So yeah, I definitely think it helped us bond. Plus, we both have awesome red hair, and that helps too. <laughs> this is true. Um, and then from there on, then so we're looking. We've had two uh, two Eve shows to date, mm-hmm. and uh, we've got the uh, double header coming up in April. Yeah, um, as well. Um, I suppose at this point it's too early to say what you're going to be involved with with that. But uh, I mean, what wh- what are you looking for from Eve in, in 2011? Uh, I mean, really, just to I think it's. I think Eve's a really amazing idea. It's because there's there's not there hasn't been a lot for women in Europe um, until Eve's come along um, in recent in recent time, and um, I think I just I just want to be able to get out there, get some amazing matches, and just uh, provide some kind of entertainment for for that that gap in the market. I think there's. Um, uh, a huge, you know, market for women's wrestling that hasn't been fulfilled to this point, and if I can help to be part of that, then that's really what I what I want to do. So, yeah. <laughs> I like the sound of that, and uh, of course, one of the other promotions that's uh, actually going for 
a proper women's division instead of just a token women's match on a show every so often is EWW. Uh, yeah. And I made my way down to EWW for my uh, first taste of that a little while ago as well. Um, got to see you wrestle there along with a, a bunch of other girls as well. EWW, um, talk a little bit about that for people who've, who've never heard of it. Um, EWW are a great promotion. They're run by it's run by Scarlet and Dominator, who are their current champions. Um, it's a really great promotion. It's just it's just a really positive atmosphere. It's a family show, um, it's it's just a lot of fun. And it, it, backstage is amazing. There again, it's as I said, it's like a it's like a family backstage as well. We're all there to support each other and help each other out. And I think it helps to make a, you know really good shows because because we all gel well and we want to make a like have a good show and, and entertain people and I think that comes comes through and um, like you said they really are starting to build a, a good women's division and um, there's five of us at the moment and there's a few more girls coming down in the new year um, and uh, I think the plan for 2011 is that there's actually going to be an all-female show coming out of EWW and um, no details yet but that's something that's in the works which is uh, also very exciting I have to be there for that yes definitely I know it's, the, I know it's pretty much the, the corner of the country but I have to get down there for that one. I think it's going to be a fun one, definitely. Just, just, just as a reference for anybody who hasn't heard of EWW before, uh, their uh, their catchphrase on their Facebook fan page, which is easily found, is uh, is called uh, the badly behaved stepchild of British wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're like looking it's, at it. it's a family show, but it does have that kind of sort of edgy attitude to it as well. Uh, definitely, I think the thing about um, our our show as well is we've got a, a huge bunch of characters um, some wrestling shows you go and there's an amazing obviously the wrestlers are amazing but they come out they wrestle they're done that's it I think uh, we have a lot of larger than life characters and a, a lot of people that like to have a lot of fun and maybe get into a little bit of trouble every now and again but uh, definitely larger than life characters <laughs> just on a funny story as well isn't it true that uh, both you and Scarlett accidentally bought the same wrestling gear without knowing it yeah <laughs> That was really, um, yeah. We both ended up buying the same gear and uh, in different colors. <laughs> um, but yeah, Scarlett was like, "If you wear that uh, on my show, I'll kill you." <laughs> I, was like, I promise, I won't. I swear. <laughs> so yeah, it was all it was all lighthearted banter. But I, I am a little bit scared that if I wore it, she would probably beat me up. <laughs> Lovely. Um, one thing actually you mentioned uh, about uh, both the the Pro Wrestling Eve camp that you went to and EWW mm-hmm. as well is that it seems to be a really good uh, support network for uh, somebody like yourself who's uh, you know only still learning themselves and trying Absolutely. to get into and get all these contacts and places to work. Um, were you aware of the, the, that sort of generation of you know Jetta and uh, Jazz and Jade and Sky and all that sort of chick fight generation because they all they've all sort of like you know, given up over the last couple of years and, mm. and there's there's a kind of this new uh, crop of girls coming through and, and they haven't really necessarily got a lot of the people to, to look up to from the previous generation. So a lot of the girls are, I think, finding a lot of support and a lot of sisterhood sort of from each other to try and keep sure, themselves sure. going. Um, um, yeah, I'd say that's very true. I think... Um, I, I don't know because obviously I wasn't around, but I definitely know that in the States... It, um, in previous times, just from friends that have wrestled out there, that women's wrestling can get quite like bitchy and catfighty. And I think um, if you don't work together, then you're never going to have a, a good show or good matches. And I think the girls in the UK right now are, are really supportive of each other because we know we need each other. We know, you know, if you want to get bookings or you want to have good matches or, you know, just good shows generally, then we all need to, to work together. And um, that positive network, I think, is really shining through. Um, about like the the ladies that have come before us in British wrestling, to be honest, I'd heard of Jetta um, a lot more than any of the others, um, probably because she's loud and outspoken. Um, no, you, you, hear, you hear her coming before you see her coming. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, but you uh, jest. She's quiet. <laughs> but uh, so I hadn't I hadn't heard a lot about the others, um, and I, I kind of then went and did once I got into wrestling, went and did my research and, and learned a lot more, which was really good. And then um, I actually got to have my first singles match um, with Jada as well, and so um, she helped to like give me a lot of advice because I had that first match, and I was like, I'm terrible, I'm awful, and she's actually like, No, you're you're actually quite good considering how long you've been training, and I was like, Oh, thanks. So um, I was there. Uh, for, I was there for that match as well. That's the there you go. So, <laughs> a little bit of so, history. Uh, 
so uh, I uh, so that was that was really good for me and uh, and then yeah go I went and did my research and found out about um, sort of the girls that had been going around in, in British wrestling and also um, I really hadn't been exposed to Shimmer before then as well so I had a bit of catching up to do there as well <laughs> I know but I know you've got a big video collection now a big DVD collection now yep I do indeed <laughs> Excellent. A couple of, t- of t shirts as well. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. That's the spirit. Yes. <laughs> So, um, yeah, well, that's that's really interesting. As far as 2011 is concerned, we've got Eve coming up, EWW possible uh, all-woman show. Anything else uh, you got as far as 2011 that you're sort of thinking of as, as, a, as a goal towards uh, the year? Well, I mean, uh, 2010 sort of, yeah, been a real filling out process for me. As I said, like, I, only, I only made my debut six months ago. So um, 2011, I really want to sort of put my stamp on 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 my wrestling and and kind of go this is who i am this is where i'm at and i just want to get out there and wrestle as many places as possible um and you know i just want to wrestle everywhere and anywhere and uh, i think i'm just gonna be working towards my my wrestling dream as cheesy as it is i want to wrestle for shimmer so that's <laughs> like that's my dream so i think 2011 is going to be about me working hard um every step of the way to try and get there so you know if you can put in a good word with the ghost of uh, podcasts of the past that would be super awesome <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why you're the ghost of podcasts yet to come because i think we're gonna have plenty to talk to you about in future um I Rhea, hope so. <laughs> uh, yeah cheers for uh, for popping along we, we had an idea that we were going to get a third guest and i don't know why that was it's kind of like that's, this gimmick's been used somewhere before. <laughs> um, but no, in all seriousness, uh, thanks very much. Lee, uh, you want to wrap it up? Well, I just wanted to, on behalf of Stu and myself, just say thanks to, first off, to, to all of our guests over the last year or so on the Women of Wrestling podcast. You've all been fantastic. and We really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us um, about, about everything and being so open and honest with us in, in all of our conversations. Secondly, we want to thank everybody who's listened to the podcast, supported the podcast, and has followed us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Facebook, you just got to put Women of Wrestling into the uh, into the search bar and for twitter it's just uh, wow underscore podcast and we're going to be keeping you updated with what we're going to be getting up to in 2011 so please keep keep following us please keep supporting us and if you have any requests on any 